The last modification we want to do to our QR algorithm is we want to sort of precondition it. We sort of sort of modify the problem to one that has the same answers but is easier to solve. And what that is is something we call upper Hessenberg form. And the basic idea is that we've got something that's almost upper triangular. The elements below the subdiagonal could also be non-zero, but everything below that is zero. This is a slightly weaker statement than the sure form that we talked about before, because anything on the subdiagonal could be non-zero, whereas in the sure form, we had that thing where we had to have two by two blocks type things. But the important thing is, is that every square matrix is similar to one in this upper Hessenberg form. By putting it into this upper Hessenberg form before doing the QR algorithm to try to put into the sure form, one, we've got a whole bunch of zeros down at the bottom left part. Those, of course, zeros always make numerical analysis a lot easier to do. And there's another problem I haven't really talked about there, but there were times when the QR algorithm wouldn't converge. And this tends to sort of fix that. I won't go into the details on exactly how or why, but let's just say that this thing actually means that the process works in cases where it wouldn't have worked before. Rather than trying to go through and explain the algorithm in general, I think I'm going to do an example. So I want to put this thing into this upper Hessenberg form. And we're going to do it using householder reflectors. When we used householder reflectors before, we took the entire first column and flipped it to something which only had an entry in the top left. The problem with trying to do that here, and it'd be great if I could, but it wouldn't be similar anymore. And the problem with similarity, I mean, the reason we want similarity is that it has the same eigenvalues. So we've got to avoid that. I can't do the entire first column. What I'll do instead is reflect those three entries. So using the notation for our Householder reflectors reviewed in the last video. My x vector is the vector here, the negative 1, 2, 2. And then my w vector is the norm of x vector, 0, 0. Now, I should be a little careful here. In general, we do plus or minus the norm of x vector. And the tradition, or sort of the thing we do, is we make sure it has the opposite sign to the x vector first component. The reason we do that is we want to be sure that we don't get too much cancellation when we do the subtraction and we end up with something with, that's ill-conditioned. But in this case, since we had a negative, we want to take the positive norm. And the norm there is 3. So my W is going to be 3, 0, 0. Then my V is my W minus my X is 4, 2, 2. It's actually 4, negative 2, negative 2. Now we create our P matrix, our projection matrix, which is V times V transpose over V transpose V. Well, V times V transpose, you can work it out. We're going to get 16, negative 8, negative 8, negative 8, 4, 4, negative 8, 
4, 4. Putting that over V transpose V, which is 16 plus 4 plus 4, I'm multiplying that by 1 24th. So that gives me my P matrix of 2 thirds, negative 1 third, negative 1 third, negative 1 third, 1 sixth, 1 sixth, negative 1 third, 1 sixth, 1 sixth. Okay, but now my householder matrix, and I'm going to call this H1 hat because we're going to have several different householder reflectors in the course of this thing. That's I minus 2P. So that's going to give me negative one third. Uh, wait, hold on. Uh, yes, 1 minus 4 thirds is negative 1 third. I'm going to get a positive 2 thirds, a positive 2 thirds, a positive 2 thirds, a positive 2 thirds, uh, a 2 thirds, a negative 1 third, a negative 1 third, and a two-thirds. It's worth noting here that this householder reflector is a an orthonormal matrix. The columns are orthogonal and they all have norm equal to one. That means that its inverse is its transpose but it's also symmetric so it is its own inverse. Now the only problem is my original matrix was 4 by 4 and this thing is 3 by 3. So my actual reflector matrix that I'm going to do, H1 without a hat, is going to be a 4 by 4 where I'm just going to put a 1 in the upper left zeros and then this matrix down here in the bottom three by three part. It is worth noting that all those properties, this is still orthonormal and it is still symmetric. Okay. So then what we're going to do, because this is its own inverse, we can say then if we take H1 times my original matrix, which I'll call A, times H1, this is a similarity operation because H1 is its own inverse. And what I get is the first column becomes, the whole point of us setting this thing up, the 1 isn't affected. This part becomes 3, 0, 0. It became my W that I was reflecting to. And everything else gets screwed up. I mean, everything else changes. We get... Uh, I'm not going to go ahead and do all the multiplications. 10 thirds, 0, 3, 4, 1 third, negative 4 thirds, 2 thirds, 8 thirds, then 4 thirds, negative 5 thirds, negative 2 thirds, negative 2 thirds. So now I want to go ahead and do it to the second column. Again, so this one here, everything below the subdiagonal is zero. 
So I want to do the same thing. Honestly, the only entry that I still need to get to be zero is this one right here. But I'm going to do that by doing a householder reflector on this part right here. My new v vector, or my new x vector, is the 3, 0, or 3, 4. My w vector, I'm going to take the 2 norm of this, which is 5, but again, I want to have the opposite sign to the first entry, so it's actually, we're going to go to a negative 5, 0. My v vector is w minus x is negative 8, negative 4. My P matrix is V, V transpose over V transpose V. Which comes out to... Uh, Four-fifths. Two fifths, two fifths, one fifth. Now I'm going to do the I minus two P to find my actual householder reflector. And that comes out to be negative three fifths, negative four fifths, negative four fifths, uh, three fifths. But again, this is 2 by 2. I need a 4 by 4 matrix to do the whole thing. I'm going to put a 2 by 2 identity up here. Fill it out with zeros in that row and column. And then this comes down and is the bottom 2 by 2. Now, it's important to realize I'm doing this not to the original A matrix, but to the one we did the reflectors on before. So what I'm really doing, I'm doing H2 left and right to H1, A, H1. And honestly, I didn't even bother working out this whole thing, but the first column stays the same, was the 1, 3, 0, 0. The 10 third stays the same. Uh, let's see, it was a zero, that stays the same. And then we reflected this to be a negative five there and a zero. And then we get junk over here, which doesn't matter in terms of getting into this form, because now we've got it in the upper Hessenberg form. And now applying the QR algorithm to this version of it, which has the same eigenvalues as the original matrix A, will work much better.